Hello and welcome. This is KG Tutorials. Today we are going to discuss unique transactions. But before we can go any further, let's familiarize ourselves with the forms of ownership. In South Africa, we have the main four forms of ownership. The first one is sole trader. The second one is partnership. The third one is close cooperation. And now, this topic will be conducted under companies. So since this topic is will be conducted under companies, we have to familiarize ourselves with the Companies Act. The Companies Act number 71 of 2008 has introduced several significant changes to company laws in South Africa, which resulted to two of the most significant changes in terms of their effects on accounting entries in the Grade 12 curriculum. So now from 2011, the Companies Act 71 of 2008 has introduced some changes which had an effect on the grade 12 curriculum. The first change is that shares of no power value. Section 35 subsection 2 states that a share does not have a nominal or a power value. So this means if you come across a question paper that has a power value or that requires a power value just delete that question or leave that question paper altogether i will also advise you to use question papers from 2014 since question papers before 2014 can be unapplicable for you number two they have introduced the buying back of shares. Subsec section 48 allows companies to repurchase its shares from shareholders under certain conditions. So now this means we are going to deal with the new concept called buying back of shares. So now be alert. Now we are going to look at the ledger, ledger accounts that we are going to be dealing with in this topic the first one is ordinary share capital the second one is retained income the third one is SAS income tax we're going to also look at shareholders for dividends income tax ordinary share dividend and we are going to look at this major account the appropriation account now let's look at this account in details the first one is ordinary share capital. We must be aware that ordinary share capital is an owner's equity account and is a capital account. So now we know that all our capital accounts will increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. This means that our balance brought down will be on the credit side. Now let's look at an example. We are required to draw ordinary share capital account for the year ended February 2020. Right, the company has 500,000 authorized shares available. What are the authorized shares? Authorized shares is just shares that the business come up with to use to increase capital in the business so now for example if the company makes up to 500 or authorized shares and they decide to issue 100,000 of those shares that means they will have 400,000 authorized shares because now that hundred thousand will now become issued shares so now when shares are issued to the public that means the public will pay for those shares 
once they've paid for those shares the company use the money to increase or to grow the business so now the public can keep those shares until they feel to sell them back and then now the company it is allowed to repurchase those shares when they feel like they don't need too much capital this time those shares have worked for them very well and now they can buy them back and keep them in the company until they feel like they need more capital to grow the business so now here in this ordinary share capital we do not record authorized shares because authorized shares are just shares that are in the business doing nothing they are just waiting for for a for a rainy days so now we are going to work with authorized shares and uh, sorry 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 we are going to work with issue shares and buy shares board back so now all our issue shares will be recorded on the credit side every time you hear the word issue 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 of shares record that transaction in the credit side of the ordinary share capital and then now on our debit side we're going to record the shares board back now we'll take an example the company issued 250 shares at free rent for 750,000 at the beginning of the year. All right, these shares were issued at the beginning of the year. Obviously, to open the business, I mean the company, they needed this amount. So that's why they issued 250 shares. So now, this means that these shares will be recorded as our balance brought down on the credit side so let's record that amount right on 1 january 2020 the company issued 150 shares at five rent for 750,000. so they felt like those 700 and those 250 shares are not enough so now we need more capital that's why the company decided to issue further shares to the public. So now they issued 150 shares, but the public paid 750,000 rand. So now, as we can notice something here, the, sh the share price has increased from 3 rand, from 3 rand in the beginning to 5 rand. So now shares increase, right? Now, we are going to record that transaction in our credit side as bank. Why? Because now the public will pay and the company will receive money. And then that's why this need to be recorded onto our CRJ. So now we're going to record that 750 on our credit side. Now, on 30 January 2020, the company bought back 30,000 shares at 7 rand for 210,000. So, the price of shares increased again, right? The price just increased, increased, and increased, right? Now, we already know on which side we are going to record this transaction. Why? Because this transaction is a board bag buying bag of shares and then we already highlighted that when shares are bought back we're going to record it away on a debit side so now we already know but don't be too excited because we are not going to use this amount to record in the ordinary share capital when we record shares bought back in the ordinary share capital account we are going to use the average price per share so now we first record the average price per share this is how we record the average price per share in the beginning 
250,000 shares were issued for how much for 750,000 so now let's start by calculating going to write 750,000 now during the year they've issued shares for how much for 750,000 so now we add those amounts so please be careful when you calculate the average do not use authorized shares do not use shares bought back only use issued shares so now that is where we'll, st we'll stop we'll stop now we're going to divide these amounts by the number of shares now in the beginning we have issued 250,000 shares during the year they've issued how much 150,000 shares so now when you div when you divide you're going to get 3.75 cent which is the average price per share now you're going to take the number of shares that we are buying back and we multiply them by the average price this is how we are going to do it please be careful do not write shares bought back in this account write bank why because the money will be coming out from the bank account of the business so now we are paying that's why we should record this thing into the cpj so now please always record the calculation in bracket to get to get part mark there now when we say 30,000 shares multiplied by 3.75 rand we are going to get 112,500 and that is how we record the ordinary share capital now the last step that you do you close off the account or you can or i can say balance the account now let's review we have bought back the shares for 210,000 all right but we only recorded 112,500 in the ordinary share capital account then now when I take 210,000 mm. subtract the 1 112,500 I get 90 7,500 so now what is going on what will happen with this amount where do we record that amount if you really want to know let's meet in the next video thank you